Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. As President of the United States, I am mindful of the dangers that we face. They cross my desk every morning. I lead the strongest military that the world has ever known. Do you? Do you now? The military you have deballed, the military you have debased, the military you have defunded, the military you have purged. No, my friends, we are seeing finally many different statements come to, come to mind today. Russian roulette comes to mind. Russia bombed Syria, as you well know by now. It's the story of the morning on every channel. And all we hear about is, oh, they're not really going after ISIS. No, they're going after the good rebels. Well, who are the good rebels? Tell me who the good rebels are. Does anyone know who the good rebels are? They're the mercenary army that Obama built up to topple Assad. The fact of the matter is Russia is acting in its own self-interest, and they will continue to act in their own self-interest. Unlike this president, which acts, who acts God only knows in whose interests. They're certainly not in the interests of the United States of America. The Syrian war with airstrikes by Russia has jolted the entire Middle East into a brand new situation, a new era. And there are many sounds that you have to hear today on the Savage Nation. We just got through listening to perhaps one of the most bizarre uh, sound bites or speeches of my life, and that's this character, Ash Carter, who was the defense secretary. This is an, a nightmare to watch this man hesitating, hemming and hawing, another pink tie running the military. This guy was put in strictly to advance the gay and lesbian agenda. This guy knows nothing about defense. This guy looks like he belongs where he came from, which is Harvard University. And moreover, our so-called defense secretary, Ash Carter, is a former advisor to many defense contractors, in case you didn't know that. But he's not the problem. The problem is the thin man in the White House. The problem is Barry Obama from Honolulu, who is so over his head that even his most devout supporters recognize the world is going up in flames. In fact, occurring the other day at the United Nations was something even more remarkable. As you know, Cameron and Obama are on the same page with regard to almost everything. And yet Cameron of England uh, and Obama, who were debating Islamic extremism at the UN, had a little disagreement because Obama would not say one word about radical Islam. And even, even Cameron could not believe what he was listening to. Listen to the interchange between Obama and Cameron of England in clip two. Violent extremism is not unique to any one faith. Violent extremism. So no one should be profiled or targeted simply because of their faith. Yet, we have to recognize that ISIL is targeting Muslim communities around the world. Barack, you said, and you're quite right, that every religion has its extremists. But we have to be frank that the biggest problem we have today is the Islamist extremist violence that has given birth to ISIL, to Al-Shabaab, to Al-Nusra, Al Al Al-Qaeda, and so many other groups. So even Milktoast Cameron, even Milktoast Cameron had to step out from behind his, uh, his uh, tasseled loafers and say, I can't even swallow this one. Again, he won't say Muslim, Islam, and extre extremism in the same breath. So we are in a new world right now. Uh, Putin has pulled the trigger. Russia began their airstrikes using Su-34 fullback bombers. Everyone's fear is that there will be a clash between United States uh, <clears throat> fighter jets and Russian fighter jets over Syria. That would be the worst possible outcome. Russia demanded this morning, Russia demanded this morning that the United States stop their airstrikes, which is a joke unto itself. Excuse me, what airstrikes? Now we hear Kerry and the others trumpeting the airstrikes of the last year against ISIS while they've metastasized and taken over a territory larger than Great Britain. What airstrikes? Which aspirin factories was Obama blowing up with our uh, jets? 
wasting the precious resources of our fighter pilots on a charade, a paper war against ISIS. We know that he's not fighting ISIS, which is why ISIS has grown. Many of us believe that he has actually funded ISIS, supplied weapons to ISIS, and that ISIS is Obama's army set up specifically to take down Assad. When I started saying this nine months ago, many of you thought I was crazy. But little by little, the truth of that has come to the light, come to light has it not? So the U.S. has said to Russia, no, we're not going to stop our airstrikes. We're going to continue them. But where are they? What airstrikes? What exactly is Obama doing in the Middle East? He's bumbling and we're praying to God that finally the American people wake up to what this man has done and is doing to this nation. There are so many other related elements to this story, and I'll bring them to light all day long, including no doubt speeches by leaders as they come forward with their double talk. Kerry gave another another one of his lie, lying speeches today. Ash Carter gave an embarrassing appearance today. And it's all about what? What's it really about? It's about bringing down Assad. Now, let's face it. Assad is a dictator. He's a very, very dangerous man. But he's not going anywhere because he is a puppet of Russia and a useful puppet of Russia. Telling Russia to abandon Assad would be the equivalent of telling the United States to get rid of Netanyahu. Now, I'm not putting Assad and Netanyahu in the same class of humanity. Don't get me wrong. But make no mistake about it. You're going to tell Russia to abandon Assad? Why should he do it? And who is Assad? I don't think you people even know who a Bashar al-Assad is. He is not a Sunni Muslim, by the way. He is a Shia, really, an Alawite, which is a branch of Shia Islam. He has never really been a follower of Islam. He's a scientist, a doctor. He was not educated in a madrasa, as was Obama. Did you know that Obama is probably more of a Muslim than Bashar al-Assad? That's an alarming statement, isn't it? Assad never went to a madrasa. Obama went to a madrasa in Indonesia. Assad was educated at the Arab French uh, Al Hariya school in Damascus, where he became fluent in English and French. He went on to study medicine at the University of Damascus, graduating in 1988. He conducted his residency in ophthalmology at a military hospital outside of Damascus. He then traveled to Western Eye Hospital in London, England. His father had been grooming his brother Bassel as the future president. But in 1994, Bassel was killed in an auto accident. And Bashar was recalled to Damascus to, be, to begin being groomed for the throne. And you should know this. Al-Assad was more moderate than his father, Hafez, who was also a moderate monarch. By the way, history shows us that Syria is one of the more tolerant of the Levant states, along with Jordan. Did you know that? Yeah, oh, he's a dictator, all right. And he certainly knows how to take care of the Islamists in his country, all right. But make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. It was the Arab Spring, initiated by Hillary Clinton, funded by George Soros, that brought about the nightmare of what's going on in Syria. And so where does it leave us? How did the relations with Syria get so bad? The fact of the matter is, there was a time that Syria was not on our hit list. No, not at all. What happened to change that? In 2009, U.S. relations with Syria turned negative. What happened in 2009? Barry from Honolulu became president. Barry from Honolulu refused to help Syria expel former Iraqi al-Qaeda fighters. Barry from Honolulu claimed that al-Qaeda was, was composed of innocent civilians. So before we go on and paint Assad as the evil devil, let's look at the evil that surrounded the turning of the uh, shrew here. And let's compare our current administration and Assad. This is a, a new day, and I'm going to ask you, the listeners of the Savage Nation, do you support or oppose today's airstrikes? Everyone listening to this show, no matter what your walk of life may be, no matter what your education uh, may be, level may be. Everyone has an opinion on this. If you've been watching the news all day, you're going to call me and give me the obvious, and please don't, telling me, well, he's not really attacking um, ISIS. He's attacking moderate Syrian rebels. 
I don't know what moderate Syrian rebels are, do you? And secondly, what is it our business in Syria? What the heck is our business in Syria? Why are we involved in a civil war in Syria? Why are we sticking our nose into a civil war in Syria? Why is that our business? If you wanted to argue about foreign intervention, you could argue that a Syrian civil war is of grave consequence to Russia, not to the United States. If you take a look at a map and look at it carefully, you'll see that Syria is somewhat connected to Russia, is it not? How in the world is Syria connected to the United States? Syria doesn't pose any threat to the United States. So there's another player here, and I've hinted at it before, and I'm a great supporter of Israel. I continue to be a great supporter of Israel. But that doesn't mean Israel uber alles. And it doesn't mean Israel is always right. And it doesn't mean Israel right or wrong. It's Israel that's been wagging the dog on this entire fiasco in Syria. It's been Israel that's been whispering in the ears of our Defense Department and in the ears of our contractors telling us exactly what to do to bring down Assad, who they fear gravely. Now, maybe they should fear him. I don't know. My personal feeling is... At the end of the day, now that Russia is so deeply enmeshed in the Syrian civil war, they will constrain Hezbollah, and Israel actually has less to fear now that Russia is involved, rather than more to fear. And that's my personal opinion. I think Russia will be a stabilizing force in the Middle East, rather than an unstabilizing force. The greatest destabilizing force in the Middle East has been Barry from Honolulu. Barry from Honolulu, who came to office with zero foreign policy experience, has learned nothing on the job. All he learned how to do is bamboozle the American people and threaten the useless pink-tide Republicans. He has been a disaster across the globe. But you, the listener of the Savage Nation, what do you think? We know what's going on. Russian roulette is what's going on. You've got Russian warplanes uh, fighting. The same day that this happened, a major city fell in Afghanistan to Al-Qaeda. This is days after Obama gave another lying speech that Al-Qaeda was on the run in Afghanistan. This is after the military begged Barry from Honolulu to leave a, rest a, rest a restraining force in Afghanistan. And he did the same thing he did in Iraq. He pulled our troops down to a level where they could no longer protect the nation. It's Barry from Honolulu. He's destroying the entire world. When would you wake up to the fact that we have a monster in the White House who has destroyed the Middle East, wrecked our borders, language, and culture, and he's only just gotten started? And yet he had the nerve a few weeks ago to say the gravest threat to the world is global warming. Not ISIS, which has conquered a territory larger than Great Britain under his watch if you want to call it his watch larger than great britain they have raped and pillaged their way across the middle east and finally putin said that's enough you're not getting syria you're not taking out assad you're not taking away our warm water ports period end of story and he frankly is doing the job that obama said he was doing but again barry was lying and he was not doing it if he's been conducting these airstrikes for a year as these empty suits have been saying all day, then why is ISIS growing rather than shriveling? You're telling me our Air Force is that bad? We have the greatest Air Force in the world, at least we did until Barry took over. God only knows who's running the Air Force now. I don't know which, uh, uh, let's put it this way, which creature he found in which university to destroy the Air Force, along with the Navy and the Marines. But the fact of the matter is, anyone can see that if we have been uh, bombing Syria for a year now to take out ISIS, we have failed. So who failed? Is it the brave young kids who fly these jets? No, it's not them. They could have taken ISIS out in a week. Many of them have even said so after they quit the Air Force and couldn't believe what they were being forced to do. No, it's not the young men flying our jets who failed us in taking out ISIS. It's the commander in grief, the greatest thief of our sovereignty in the history of this republic. And I'm not saying that just to be glib. When I come back, I'll take your calls on this subject. And the topic is quite simple. It's one question. <clears throat> Do you support or oppose Russia's, Russia's airstrikes in Syria? I'll be right back. Join the